the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. What I mean? We have enough room. If you are in the back, you can sit here in the front. Today, have you noticed the theme of the gospel today and even the psalm about baptism? Matter of fact, the months of Tuba focus so much about baptism. All the reading during the months of Tuba and it, today, the third Sunday of the month of Tuba, focus on baptism. Especially during the month of Tuba, also we celebrate the baptism of our Lord God's Spirit Christ. Just I want to speak to you a little bit about baptism today. Baptism, actually, number one in our church here is a sacrament. One of the main seven sacraments is the baptism. In fact, the first sacrament in our church, if anyone wanted to become a Christian, we tell him the number one thing you have to do, you must be baptized. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about baptism. And today is in the psalm, actually, Psalm 69 said, We went through fire and through water, but you have brought us up into the place, which means the gift of the baptism, you go through the water, but actually you receive the gift of basically wealthy, and you become enrich, enrichment by the Holy Spirit. Baptism is one of the sacraments in our church with the foundation of every sacrament. This sacrament actually is allow you, if anybody, any believers want to become a, a, a member in our church, you tell them the number one, the first thing, you must be baptized. So we all agree that the baptism is the foundation for our church. It's the beginning of the sacrament. Uh, for sure, there are so, uh, the importance of the baptism. The importance of the baptism appeared very clear in John chapter 3. When a man, his name is Nicodemus, came to Jesus and asked him, what shall I do to go into heaven? That's our goal, all of us here. One of our main important goals, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to see my loved one. Jesus asked, uh, told him, look, by the way, you must be born again. And then said, how can I be born again? Then the Lord the God, actually, our Lord God, Jesus Christ, tell him in Matthew, in John chapter 5, 3 verse 5, tell him, unless a man born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. It became a foundation here. One of the important sacraments in our church, you must be born of water. And right away, immediately, we give you the gift of the Holy Spirit with, the, with, the, with the, another sacrament, the sacrament of confirmation or chrismation. And our Lord God Spirit emphasized the importance of this sacrament here. You must, unless, unless, like one time he said, unless you change and you convert and become like little children, you cannot enter into heaven. You have to become a child in order to. But he said also, unless you be born again by the Holy Spirit, unless you born by water and spirit, you cannot enter into heaven. And also our Lord God Spirit Christ emphasized that very well in Matthew, in Mark chapter 16, verse 16. It's a famous verse all of us will know very well. He said, who believes and baptizes will be saved. Man amen or atamat khalas. Whoever believed and baptized will be saved. Matter of fact, there's a beautiful story in the Old Testament to emphasize the importance of cleanness, baptism, and also life of repentance to meet Jesus. Our Lord God, Savior Christ, he used to appear to Moses a lot. And one time the people actually started complaining. He said, Look, why always God appear to you? We want to see God like you also. For the Lord God actually told the Moses, you know what, tell the people to go to the mountain of Sinai, up in the mountain, I'm going to meet and see all of them. Then the, he went, Moses told the people, get excited, our Lord God Jesus Christ will meet us in the mountain of Sinai. Then the Lord God then actually in Acts this, chapter 19, Acts 19, he said to him, verse 1 and 2, he said, go to the people of Israel, let them sanctify themselves today and tomorrow. And wash their clothes. For on the third day I will appear to them and see them. For the Lord God actually put a condition here. You must be sanctified by the Holy Spirit and washed by air, by washed. And the baptism actually is the first wash that all of us will receive to allow us to become a Christian and allow us to see God. And uh, even during the Great Commission in, John, in Matthew chapter 28, when our Lord God Spirit Christ finish up and basically gather all the disciples. This is after the, before the ascension. He said to them, go to, the, go to all nation, make disciple, and baptize them in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So no, this is the important baptism. And this baptism has so many symbols in the Old Testament. One of the symbols when the people of Israel went through the rich sea in order for them to get the promise and after they came out of Egypt. It means us, for all of us, we need to go to the water in order for us to be baptized. Another symbol, actually, baptism also, the flood itself. When the flood happened, this is in Janet chapter 8, and the flood, symbol of water, all the people were in the ship, 
they were basically baptized by the water of the blood in order for them to be saved. And also, the, uh, also when the Lord God actually appeared, as I told, appeared to the people of Israel, told them, I want to wash yourself. You must be clean in order for me to see Christ himself. Yani. And this is emphasized to all of us, really, the importance of the baptism from the Old Testament and even when the Lord God actually met Nicodemus in John chapter 3. And matter of fact, actually, I always say there's a story. I read a beautiful meditation. He said the people of Israel actually had to do two steps. When they came out of Egypt, they had to go to the Red Sea. Then Moses stayed with them 40 years in the Red Sea. Then after that, Joshua came. In order for them to, to get to the Promised Land, they had to go with Joshua to another river. Anybody remember which river here? Huh? Jordan River. For the beautiful meditation I read, actually, very beautiful. It said, by the way, in life, you as a Christian, you must go to a type of water in your life. First water, the baptism, the Red Sea. You must be baptized in order for you to save. But you're going to live in this life here. The desert is a symbol of basically our personal struggle in this life here. We're going to struggle every day. But in order for you to get to the promised land, you need to have the second wash, which is the tears of repentance. For therefore, all of us actually were baptized into Christ. But all of us right now living in this wilderness, this life here, we must be washing ourselves every day, renewing our personal baptism by basically one thing only, by, uh, in order to go through the Jordan River, which is basically a Jordan River is simply of repentance. Your daily repentance, your, dear, your tears, this is actually, in fact, one of the fathers, I think St. Irina said, the second wash is as good and important as the first wash. Taban, the first wash is the most important one, which is the baptism. But the second wash was the tears of repentance. When you renew your own personal baptism, when you sit with yourself quietly and you said, you know what, I did something wrong and you regret what you did, the second wash is for, for all of us right now, baptized, we got, went to, already went through the Red Sea, but we need to go through the Jordan River in order for us to be, get to the promised land with, with Joshua, which is the tear for repentance. Come back to God, sit with yourself, Especially forgive me, I always say that, Yanni. Now we have uh, Jonah is coming in a week. Then in two weeks after Jonah will be lent. The most, Yanni, the most misunderstood sacrament in our church is the sacrament of baptism. Yanni, they men bata kada bol fi Masr. Lam matruh Masr, tlay al tabur bata la atraf tawil awi. Wa tabur al tanawil ulayil. Hena la aks tabur al atraf ish mawgud. Wa lakin tabur al tanawil tlay tawil awi awi. Everybody, fa make sure you must. See your father of confession. You must live the Jordan River, the, the Jordan River, in order for you actually to a to to go to heaven and to be qualified to heaven. But all of us will receive the gift of the baptism. But in order for us, we need to live the life of repentance. I want to give you two beautiful, simple things about baptism. Number one, baptism for all of us as a Christian, it is a lifetime commitment. It is a lifetime commitment. All of us here, without exception. Without exception, all of us who have been baptized into Christ, but therefore all of us as St. John said, Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, he said, those who have been baptized into Christ put on Christ. For you and I who have Christ in us. You are put on Christ. Everybody sees you, see Christ in you. And one of the fathers, St. Irena, who said, baptism is one-time performance. It's only one time. You cannot baptize twice. It's only one time. But it's a lifetime commitment. Baptism is one-time performance and lifetime commitment. I want you today, actually, during that, because we, that, as I told you, the theme of today about baptism, during the, today, the gospel, there's a dispute between John's disciple and Jesus' disciple about baptism, about water. But for us, baptism is one-time performance, but it's a lifetime commitment. I hope all of you, during the liturgy, ask yourself, am I really committed to Christ? Because once you go into the water, you become Christian. I read a beautiful book about actually it called I was blind and I can see. This is about man who was not a Christian and become a Christian. He said, you know what? Baptism may change my lifestyle. Yeah, and all of us in this church here right now attending the liturgy, all of you are baptized. But therefore, don't remember, it's one-time performance, but it's a lifetime commitment that you become a Christian. You become a Christian. And all of us, we take the word become a Christian very lightly, but it's a big deal. You and I were actually, since we are becoming a Christian, we have two important aspects. You become light to the world. Are you a light to your friends? Are you a light to your, everybody that you meet? Not only that, the Bible said also, you become salt. You are the one, the good flavor. 
all of us here like a good flavor. Can you imagine كده have a good meal ما فيهاش ملح؟ بص لما لهاش ده. إنما you have to put certain salt in order for the meat to become perfect and good. For you and I, we are the salt here. But therefore, one time performance, but it's a lifetime commitment. I hope all of you sit together yourself. Am I really a true Christian? Do I act like a Christian? Do I walk like a Christian? Because baptism actually granted me that I become a Christian. I'm a Christian. Don't take it lightly. That is, uh, once you are become, a, you feel that you are Christian, you can make a difference in our society right now. Number two, actually, in baptism, actually, we receive the most beautiful gift. Most of the fathers, Mister Saint John Christian said, you become enlightened once you come out of the water fountain. You become enlightened. So the most important about baptism actually is spiritual enlightenment, which means you see things different. Matter of fact, the next week when you come, it's the last one, last Sunday of the of the month of Hatur, and I told you the month of Hatur is about one thing. The theme is baptism. Guess what will be the the liturgy next week? Anybody remember? We read it every year. It's a famous story. We read it always on the sixth Sunday of the Great Lent. Had the fact had the had the tanasir, the story of the blind man. Next week when you come, why? Why we are reading next week the story of the blind man? Because the church remind us we've been hearing so much about baptism, baptism, baptism. Matter of fact, today we talked about the dispute went through water. And we talk about baptism now. Next week actually the church tell you here is the fruits of the baptism. You become enlightened. And matter of fact, when we read the same gospel on the six weeks during Lent, we call it had the tanasir. And so many people in Egypt, actually, the tradition, everybody want to baptize that Sunday. And had it lower six weeks. And also next week we're going to read the story because the church want to remind us the more important of the baptism or the benefit of the baptism in my life for one thing only. They give me a spiritual enlightenment. I want you to look at next week the blind man, when, he, when you are blind, can you imagine you're blind and now you can see? Your life is starting to change completely. Now you can walk the right walk. You can eat the right food. Now you have you can distinguish. You have that discernment, spiritual discernment. For the baptism, we give you that real enlightenment, that you become a spiritual discernment. You can distinguish between what's right and what's wrong. You are enlightened by the baptism, and that's why next week when you come, you can have the long chapter, John chapter nine, read the story of about one thing: the man was born blind, which we're going to read the same story in the six weeks of Sunday, uh, the sixth Sunday of the Great Lent, how to become enlightened. Baptism, one of the main goal. Or the baptism to enlighten you. Matter of fact, today, by the way, if you notice one thing, anybody remember the Catholic epistle? What was the reading about the Catholic epistle? Listen to pay attention. Abu Nasanasus Farag will tell, will ask you, can you stand up, tell me what was the reading of the epistle? What was the pay attention? Guess what? It's very simple, by the way. All of you know it. First John chapter four. Talk about one word only. Anybody remember? Oh, mean the oral Catholic epistle. About love. About love. Because the fruits of the baptism and the enlightenment that he will open your heart. You have to love God. And he said actually in the Catholic Capital, once you love, you actually fall. The, uh, uh, if, you can, if you say, I love God, but you do not love your brother, what's the benefit? For this is a gift of the baptism that we become enlightened. Enlightened. We become new person. I hope today all of you, when you walk out of the church, two things will happen to you. Number one, Remember that you have been baptized into Christ. It's one time performance. But you say to yourself, I am a Christian. I want to walk like a Christian. I want to act like a Christian. I am I'm a Christian. I've been baptized into Christ. I put on Christ. I wear Christ. The Saint John, Saint John, uh, Saint Clement, for example, said, the benefit of the baptism, holiness, righteousness. So therefore, we walk out here. It's remember one time performance, lifetime commitment. Number two, it remember one thing. The baptism is one thing. I'm reminding you, all of us who cannot remember our own person. The baptism, the goal of baptism is one thing only. To enlighten you. Enlighten you. You love those who you cannot love. You talk to the people that you cannot talk to them. You reconcile with the people that you cannot reconcile with. You are a Christian. You are a Christian. And you become like the blind man. Can you imagine, as I said, the blind man walk differently, eat differently. His life is not completely changed. The way he walk, the way he talk, and the way he eat. But therefore, we need to change our daily life right now. To say, you know what? This is a benefit of the baptism. To enlighten me. To enlighten me to be a new person. To be a good person. 
That's why he told him, unless a man born of water and, and spirit, you have to be born again. You have to be born again. You have to be a new person. You have to be filled with Christ. You have to be Christ alike. So when you walk, you become like a Christ. May the Lord God grant us the benefit of the baptism to understand the most important sacrament. All of us will receive the sacrament of baptism. That we know that through it, it's the only sacrament that will allow us to see God. You want to see Christ? You want to see God? You want to see God on the judgment day? Guess what? You must be washed. And I talked about the, the Jordan River watch and also the, the Red Sea. Red Sea, all of us will receive the Red Sea wash. But you need the Jordan River's wash in order for you eh, to go to, eh, to the promised land. Rabbana barik fikum. Just so quickly, عشان بس بعض الناس هنا نرضي حباء الثيم كلها عن المعمودية. والمعمودية أهم شيء في حياة الإنسان كلنا ياخذ لنا المعمودية. والمعمودية الأول شيء أول سر من أسرار الكنيسة المعمودية. طبعا مش هدخل بديتيل ولكن كتاب مقدس في العهد القديم والجديد حتى لما ربنا قابل نيكوديموس وقال له إن لم يولد الإنسان من الماء والروح لا يدخل من القدس فأصبحت شروط عشان واحد يدخل السماء عايز يتعمد نشكر ربنا كلنا يتعمد. وبعدين اتكلمت عن المعمودية رموز المعمودية في العهد القديم التوفار رمز المعمودية اتكلمنا على رمز ثاني المعمودية البحر الأحمر رمز المعمودية عبور البحر واتكلمت على حاجتين مهمين جدا في المعمودية المعمودية هي مرة واحدة بس ولكن بتأديني ان انا اكون مسيحي طول حياتي يعني بعد ما نزلت وطلعت المعمودية فافتكر ان انت مسيحي كل واحد هيشوفك عايزين ان نشوف المسيح لان المسيح قال لي ليروا اعمالكم الحسنة في مجد باكو سمان فتخيل لو انا وانت خدنا المبدأ ده ان انا تعمدت وبقيت مسيحي وانا هكون مسيح همشي مسيح اتكلم كمسيحي صدقوني انا وانت ممكن نغير العالم اللي احنا فيه دلوقتي كله يعني النقطة الثانية اللي اتكلمنا فيها عن المعمودية برضو ان هدف المعمودية تدي انارة استنارة روحية استنارة روحية يعني الاسبوع الجاي نقرا قصة المولود اعمى لان الكنيسة عايز تأكد ايه شهر هطور هو شهر المعمودية فالمولود اعمى ده اتنور حياته اتنورت حياته اتغيرت بدأ يشوف بدأ ينظر فهدفين من المعمودية ان المعمودية اول شيء ان هي تديني ان انا اكون مسيحي افتكر ان انا ايه كوميتد ومتعهد ربنا نمبر 2 ان انا يتنور القلب وتنور حياتي ربنا يبارك فيكم ويبارك في حياتكم ولهنا كل المجد والكرامه لابد امين